a friend of mine texted me and said, I just had a meeting where these people mentioned they want to make a horror film with the Foo Fighters. And at first I thought that's the stupidest idea I'd ever heard. And why would we ever do something that ridiculous? Dave and Nate from the Foo Fighters, great to have you on board. Uh, we're going to start with a bold statement. If the Beatles had had the special effects, Studio 666 is the movie Help could have been. I think it's the movie Get Back could have been. You just sort of throw in a couple of chainsaws and and uh, butcher knives, you would have had Studio 666. Um, <laughs> well, the two slogans from the movie that I want to get put onto a line of T-shirts, if possible, are Kiss My Grits and yes. Meditating in the Air. I want to get that on a T-shirt as well. <laughs> okay. We can make that happen. Coffee mugs, T-shirts, yeah. whatever you need. I, I thought for Be sure you were going Pearl Jam High Five on that one. I did too. Yes, I saw that one coming from <laughs> I thought it was going to be wrong. Pearl Jam High Five and you're my second favorite man after Coldplay. That's what I, yeah. <laughs> those are the two that most people remember. You guys have never done a music video by halves. When did you first come up with the idea of a film? It happened about three years ago. And it wasn't really my idea at first. A friend of mine was in some business meeting and texted me on his way out and said, I just had a meeting where these people mentioned they want to make a horror film with the Foo Fighters. And at first I thought that's the stupidest idea I'd ever heard. And why would we ever do something that ridiculous? But then we, we started making our record in this old house, which is the house in the film. We actually made our record there. And so I started thinking, well, wait, we have the house. Why don't we just finish making the record, take a couple weeks off, and then make some really low budget slasher fun horror film. And so I came up with the idea that band needs to make a record, band moves, moves into creepy old house, house happens to be haunted, I become possessed, I murder the <laughs> entire band over creative differences, and then I go <laughs> solo. And that was it. And then from there, it just kind of like just snowballed into this huge avatar project that was like, oh my God, we made a movie <laughs> and then we'll tell everybody the house was haunted while we were making the movie yeah and it was all gonna be like get it and then real life and the film and people won't know what's what just That's another day you know, the, the, i mean i gotta be honest like you never know what's 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 what comes next talking about the kiss my grits uh apron that you're wearing whilst grilling you i felt that during the movie you allowed your grilling skills to come under a bit of ridicule and we've spoken to you before on home time and you've actually caught you quite an, an accomplished barbecuer so that's quite big of you to do that listen don't talk smack about my barbecue sensitive or about you'll that. see what happens in yeah. studio 666 <laughs> <laughs> you were saying just a few moments ago that you know this this was your idea and you've you've let everyone in the band throughout the film have a go at your grilling is is that you becoming self-aware or have you been stitched up well okay so Ooh. that basic simple idea the, the premise of the whole film that was mine and then we handed that to these screenwriters this woman rebecca and her husband jeff and um so they came up with a lot of these sort of like inside jokes and i think what they were doing and talking about my lousy barbecue, they were setting up Chris Shiflett's ultimate demise. Because he was the one that talked the most shit about my barbecue. So guess what happens? You'll see. Uh, Nate, can I commend you as well and congratulate you on uh, some amazing knitwear during the movie, channeling 80s college slasher movie vibe. It's really the star of the film. Yeah, like Isn't I said. Yeah, kick-ass cardigans happen in there. Yeah, that's what happens when you hire Scooby-Doo to be your stylist for a film. <laughs> <laughs> there are some amazing stuff. There's, there's, a, there's definitely a sideline of uh, of merch there with the, the, some of the some of the uh, the Bing Crosby esque uh, knitwear. Oh, we're gonna, we're, I don't know if you know this. We're selling. Pat Smear nightcaps. Have you seen those? <laughs> no. Oh yeah. There's, <laughs> there's some amazing deaths in the movie. Obviously, um, do you have a particular favorite uh were they a collective enterprise coming up with the ideas of these deaths or is one person sicker than the other and they come up with all of them there's the death and then there's the other ones as kind of the way <laughs> it breaks down like there's <laughs> rami dies in a particularly fantastic way <laughs> Not he does yeah yeah he doesn't die of natural causes let's just say <laughs> there was a <laughs> There was a one person, this our special effects guy, Tony Gardner. He was the one that came up with most of the ideas for the kills. And he's like old school Hollywood sci uh, special effects legend. So, I mean, he, you know, he's been coming up with murder scenes his entire life. 
So, you know, he he tried to sort of go a little bit deeper with Rami's kill scene. But although Chris's is pretty good too, I like <laughs> Nate right. um, and Pat. Yeah. Like, they're all just so ridiculous that it's great. <laughs> Uh, you, you could tell straight away that you guys uh, love your horror movies because I noticed in the opening credits when I saw John Carpenter's name on there. So, you know, you got like, you went right to the top in terms of pure uh, royalty for horror movies. Yeah, it's funny. Um, that happened purely by chance and coincidence that um, our lighting designer, the guy who's our lighting guy on tour, Dan, Dan went out and did lights for John Carpenter when John Carpenter went on tour and performed his music for live audiences. So when we told Dan that we were making a horror film, Dan's like, oh my God, I know John Carpenter. You should email him and see if he'll make a cameo. And I thought, there's no way. Like, why would he ever have anything to do with us? This is, but I emailed him and I said, hi, my name's Dave in a band making a horror film. And I guess like 15 years ago, we took his son's band on tour and, um, so oh, he wow. emailed back and said, hey, since you treated my son so well on tour, not only will I be in your film, but I'll also write the theme song. So it was amazing. Jackpot. We hit the lottery. We hit the horror lottery. Um, there's a lot of Doritos throughout the movie. Is that Gee, I wonder of... why. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask. That is, so that, is that? Yeah, wait a second. I saw a Pabst Blue Ribbon in there, too. Also, oh. Maybe a little bit of Jameson's. Yeah, I mean, it was, I, you know, <laughs> none of us, first of all, we, we paid for this entire film ourselves. And just kids, movies aren't cheap. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, so there's this whole, like, I don't know, corner of the production office that deals with those sort of endorsements. And I didn't realize this was happening until there was a scene where I was kind of drinking this beer and they're like, uh, okay, Dave, let's do that one more time, but make sure you hold the label towards the camera. Like, oh. <laughs> Nobody needs to be going to update the Foo Fighters Wikipedia page just yet and say that Doritos are their potato based snack of choice. I mean, I, I gotta be honest. I usually go straight to the Doritos. And I'm not just saying <laughs> a lot of money. They bought you. They bought you. No, I mean, even before they paid me millions of dollars. <laughs> You're haunted by writer's block in Studio 666. You're nine albums now in. Surely you're never actually haunted by writer's block. I mean, most of the time we like, you know, we walk into the studio with almost too much. Here, I'll show you, actually. This is what it's like in the Foo Fighters rehearsal studio. Like, this is what this is what we're talking about here. Wow. Like, this, oh, whiteboard. Look at that. Like, this is what we have to this is what we have to do to write a set list now. It's like <laughs> whiteboards and shit. Nate, do you hate it when Dave gets on the whiteboard? Does it wind you up? Do I hate it when he gets on the whiteboard? No, yeah. because I yeah, no, I, I, I'm detail oriented that way. I like a plan. I like things to be laid out. And when things get a little organized, then I'm in my little comfort. Spot. But it stuns me that a massive band like you guys could be working with whiteboards because that's laced with danger. One person brushes against that whiteboard with a heavy coat, Dave, and you've lost so much work there. Well, yeah, but then again, like you can sniff those friggin' pens all day long and come up <laughs> jam after jam. Yeah, they're going to writer's block. Why do you think we play for three hours now? Yeah. Those friggin' pens. Get them on the pen. Get them on the pen. Uh, Get them on the pen. <laughs> speak, speaking of accidents, there's some great stunts in the movie. Uh, Dave, how much time clean of accidents are you so far? Are you uh, six months clean, one year clean of, of falling over, breaking anything? Why you gotta f jinx it, dude? Come on, I'm on a, I'm on a <laughs> run right now. Uh, I haven't had a proper accident in a while. Um, I have I have been dancing a lot on the weekends in my friends' uh, living rooms. So maybe yeah, I might I might you know pull a calf muscle every now and then. <laughs> that's the stage. That's and I'm just and I'm I'm dehydrated. So I, I don't know. Dance floors I think is like four inches tall. So yeah. <laughs> sure. You still sprain an ankle. So you could sprain an ankle. You roll your ankle like that. Careful. That's painful. It's always great fun having you on the show. Thank you so much. I feel like we see this. you guys more than we see our own children. I mean, we're doing interviews. <laughs> it's great to see like, you again. There's this place, uh, Grandmaster, that we actually recorded our second record in that was a uh, place where they uh, shot porn. That was I, remember, really I remember that one. Yeah. So then you were just like, ooh, you don't want to touch your <laughs> oh, Okay. Yeah. Oh, and it's a restaurant now. 